Hello class, this is section 9.1, Geography and the Early Greeks. Our three main ideas are, number one, geography helped shape Greek civilization. Two, trading cultures developed in the Minoan and Mycenaean civilizations. And three, the Greeks created city-states for protection and security. So our first section is on geography shaping Greek civilization. Uh, the Greek mainland is one large peninsula made up of many smaller peninsulas. So this top left picture is not Greece, this is actually Florida. And Florida is a very recognizable peninsula, but it's just one large peninsula. Greece is different in that it's, it is a large peninsula, but there are, it's kind of a large peninsula divided up into many smaller uh, peninsulas. If you look at the second picture there, this Greek map, you can see how there are little tiny peninsulas jutting out from the large one. Greece is a rocky, mountainous land surrounded by water with few flat areas for farming. And because of this, the people tended to settle along the coast, right near the water, or in the few river valleys that existed in, in the terrain. Villages and towns were separated by mountains and the sea. So you can see this top right picture is some mountains in Greece, huge mountains that would often run straight to the to the ocean um, and the sea. And you can see this really nice beach uh, on the bottom right. And because of this separation, they developed their own governments and ways of life, which makes sense, being divided up um, by these really massive mountains or by oceans. It makes sense that they would develop their uh, own unique ways of life. And here is just showing all the different regions of uh, ancient Greece in terms of the city-states, which we'll get to later. Um, travel over the mountainous land was difficult, so Greeks turned to the sea. Um, which you can see here, this is a, a rendering right, uh, of a boat that might have existed back then. Um, they used the sea as a source of food right, for, for fishing and trading with other communities. And they became skilled shipbuilders and sailors. They lived on the water, so it, it only made sense for them to, you know, learn how to make really advanced ships, sail those ships, you know, fish for food, you know, trade along the water, all of that. Um, there were two specific trading cultures that developed in early, early uh, ancient Greece, the Minoans and the Mycenaeans. Uh, starting with the Minoans. The Minoans lived on the island of Crete in the eastern Mediterranean, but they did not speak Greek, so we don't consider them the first Greeks. They just lived in the region. They were expert shipbuilders and traded goods like wood, olive oil, and pottery. Right, so again, that, that theme of shipbuilding, living on the ocean, which is why I put this picture of uh, some sea life. Crete was good for trading, but it had its dangers as well. You can see the map of Crete off the coast of, of Greece. So great for trading, but it had its dangers. Specifically, um, there was a massive volcanic eruption that created a giant wave that flooded most of Crete. All right. So the massive volcanic eruption took place on, it was an island off the coast of Crete, but uh, it created such a ma massive wave that it uh, destroyed much of the island. And the volcanic eruption created clouds of ash that killed crops and buried cities. And um, historians believe that this volcanic eruption uh, ended the Minoan civilization. And if you look on the top right here, this is the island that this took place on, uh, this volcanic eruption, the island of Thera. And you can see on the left, this is before the volcanic eruption. And after, you can see what it did to the island. You know, it destroyed the entire center of the island, leaving gaps, massive gaps. And today, this island is actually called Santorini, and it's a, uh, a very popular tourist destination with really beautiful um, beaches and oceans, and uh, it's very unique if you uh, look it up, Santorini. So the other group was the Mycenaeans. They spoke Greek, so they were considered Greeks. They also traded on the Mediterranean and built fortresses on the mainland. Eventually, the Mycenaeans took over Crete from the Minoans, they set up colonies around the Mediterranean for trade. Mycenaeans did not conduct tra trade peacefully, right? They used their, their army and their weapons and all that. 
Um, but when the Mycenaean civilization came to an end, a dark age of warfare and disorder began. And that was kind of the, the period right before um, city-states emerged, which is the next section. So there was this period of disorder, the Dark Ages. Um, for 300 years after the Mycenaeans, small groups joined together for stability and protection in city-states, which another word for city-states is polis, P-O-L-I-S. And this picture here kind of has a lot, there's a lot to it. Uh, I like this picture a lot because it, it's going to help me describe what, uh, what a city-state looked like. A city-state had an acropolis and walls for protection. Okay, so you can see the walls on the top of the city. There was a, a fortress um, for protection. Many uh, of the people of the polis lived outside the walls. So you can see people walking on the road outside the walls, and there's, there's houses outside the walls. But they did come into the city for protection during times of war. Um, life centered in the agora. Uh, agora is the Greek word for marketplace. If you look in the center, if you look inside the walls, right, there's an area where all the people are gathered. This would probably likely be the agora or the marketplace. And this was used for trade, which makes sense. It's a marketplace. But also as a meeting place to discuss and debate new ideas. And we'll get to that in Athens in the next section. People had lots of pride for their city-state, so they didn't think of themselves so much as Greeks, as uh, you know, they identified with their their polis, their city-state. So Athens was a city-state, so there were Athenians. Sparta was a city-state, so there were Spartans. And it's kind of like um, if you have a sports team you love, you would identify with that sports team. It's kind of kind of a a stretch, but a similar idea. As the city-states found peace, they eventually turned to colonization. City-states sent their ships to faraway lands to establish new city-states or colonies, and then trade between the colonies and the city-states made them rich, and many of these spots became trading centers. Greek, sailed, uh, Greek ships sailed to Egypt and many other places all throughout the Mediterranean. You can see on this map here all the blue uh, spots. Those are uh, areas controlled by Greece. So um, you can see the peninsula with all the jutting out mini peninsulas. That's Greece itself. But all the other blue areas, these would be colonies. So finally, the big idea is that Greece's geography and its nearness to the sea strongly influence the development of trade and the growth of city-states.